Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws bringing you the fourth video in my using Mojo in Monkey tutorial series. In this video, we'll be going over some of the functions in Mojo that allow us to read in and interpret the input from the player. And the first thing we're going to do is actually clean up this code from the last video. We don't need any of the explosion stuff, we don't need the scale stuff, we're just going to be changing the angle of the ship and moving it around so we don't need the explosion image or any of that. And we don't need any of this. So we get rid of our own update and then might as well just clear this out completely. Leave our clear screen. Alright, now that your code's all cleaned up, let's go ahead and get into our on update function and get started with input. First I'm going to just go over the all of the input functions that are available with Mojo and then we're going to use a couple of them to move the ship around. So the first function I'm going to go over are the ones that you can use to read in the accelerometer data from a device that has an accelerometer which would most likely only be a mobile mobile device such as you know a phone, iPhone or Android phone that have accelerometers, so you can read in the either the tilt or the movement of the object, the device. So, and those are in Monkey. I'm going to comment all these so we don't have to worry about it when we go to compile. The Excel X, Excel Y, and Excel Z. And so the Excel X, if you're looking at your phone, it's going to give you a value between negative one and one for the amount that it moves its acceleration left and right as you look at your phone. And then the Excel Y will be the movement up and down as you're looking at your phone and the Excel Z is the movement towards you or away from you as you're looking at the device. And then these next two I'm going to show you real fast. They're just a couple of functions that can only be used on mobile devices and they are the enable keyboard and disable keyboard functions and they just did disable and enable the native keyboard for the device so it doesn't pop up in the middle of your game if you don't want it to. And now I'm going to show you the joystick commands and to get the X value for a movement of a, your joystick you use the Joy X, and if you use the Joy X just like this, it's going to default to the first stick of the first device that's plugged in. And if you wanted to, let's say you have a an Xbox controller plugged in. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of use the Xbox controller example for all of these. So let's say you have an Xbox controller plugged in. If you want to use the left, there's this, and it's got the two analog sticks. So if you want to get the X or the left and right movement of the left analog stick, you're going to put zero there, or you can leave it, and that'll give you the left one. But if you want to get the one on the right, you do one for the stick. Now if you have two controllers plugged in, you send another parameter, and you can say one for the second controller, or zero, or leave it leave it off. It defaults to zero for the first controller. And this is the same thing for the Y direction of either stick, either zero or one and the Z direction and for let's say with the Xbox controller the Z is for the finger triggers and it's just a one stick so zero and what it's going to give you is if if they're holding down the left one you're going to get a negative value and if they're holding down the right one you're going to get a positive value and so and how you can get the read the button value or button states you use joy down or joy hit and the different difference between these is if the joy down returns a one if that button is currently down or a zero if it's not and what joy hit returns is the number of times this button has been pressed since the last on update commit call and so it's only going to give you one once if that makes sense. So only once you get the hit, then it's going to check it, and you can get that one once. And next time you check, if they got, if they're still holding it down, you're going to get a zero. So this is just stuff you do every time. They have to release it, and then press it again in order for joy hit to get caught, or joy hit to fire again. And just like with stick, 
you 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 send in a button, um, and these buttons values are from zero to thirty-two or zero to thirty-one, I believe. Or you can also use the joystick constants for these buttons that I'm going to show you later. But so it's going to be something you pass in a button, and then the same as the Joy X, Y, and Z, you're going to send choose which device, zero, one, two, however many devices you have plugged in. I think, I'm pretty sure Monkey only supports two, but I'm not sure. And same with the joy hit. You just send a button and it tells you how many times it's been pressed since the last on update call. And the next ones are going to show you how to get data from the mouse. And to get the mouse's X and Y position in the game screen, or it's just mouse X and mouse Y functions. And just like the joy down, joy hit, you have mouse down, and you say which button you want. And the possible values are 0, 1, or 2, or you can use these constants so you can kind of see what you're doing better. Is it mouse left, mouse right, or mouse middle? And so you can plug that in and say mouse down. So you can say while, you're, while your left mouse button is down, you can do something, or you can say do something just every time the mouse the left mouse button is clicked, whoops, not mouse down, mouse hit, so every time they click it you do something. And just so you can kind of see this in action, I'm going to run down here into our on render. Uh, real fast, I'm going to draw some text, so you can see what your mouse position is, so I'm going to say mouse position, and then we can just add mouse X, and then put a space in between, mouse Y, and then we can also check if they click down, so we can say mouse down. If you leave it like, if you just do mouse down, it's going to automatically default to the mouse left. So that's what I'll do. I was going to leave it out. And then, oh wait, I forgot to put the position of our text. And if it's if the mouse is down, I'm just going to draw some more text. Say mouse is down. And I'll put that down below. So now when I run this. You can see there's our mouse position, and then when I click the mouse down, it says mouse is down, mouse is not down, mouse is down, mouse is not down. And now to go kind of go along with mouse input, that you can also get the touch input for touch screens. And the way you do that is you call touch X to get the, the position, and you pass a number of the touch you want to get. So in this case, we'll say you can get touch one. That's gonna get your first touch. And if they're currently touching, and then they touch with another finger, you'll be able to access touch one, and so on. You can support up to 32 touches, which is kind of crazy. And okay, so then you got the touch X, touch Y for that. So you can say I want the touch X, touch Y for the third touch. And then along with those, you can get the touch down. You pass in the number of the touch that you want to get the touch down for while they're touching it down. And you also check for a touch hit. And you get the number for that. And also, these touch hit and touch down, if you do zero, this is the same as getting the mouse mouse hit or mouse down for zero. So that what I always I always just use touch hit and touch down for all my games. Same with touch X, touch Y, zero. And so this will be the mouse left for any mouse input. So say you're just testing out a game for mobile on your computer, you just use these touch commands, and then you can do all your touch stuff with your mouse. And then when you build it for your mobile device, you don't have to change all these touches back to mouse. So that's kind of a cool thing with Monkey. And then finally, we get into our keyboard commands. So the first one I'll show you is the key down, which is, of course, as you know, it returns one while the key is down. And for this, you can you can use integer values if you know of them. Or what's easier is to use the constants that come with Monkey, such as you can say key A to get the A key, or you can say key up to get the up key. And I'll show you those right now. So we'll say key hit. I'll say well, you know, key hit. Every time I hit the key down key, I, this returns one, or however many times since the last on update call. And so the way you can see or look at the key codes, go into your help, 
and the module reference and then right here topics key codes and here you have all your key codes you can check for with the key hit and key down commands and uh, also as it says right here as a convenience you can also use the key hit and key down for stuff that's not on the keyboard like mouses you can check all your mouse buttons if they're down or, or hit all your joysticks so you can use joy and tick the A, B, X, Y this obviously you can see this for uh, Xbox controller and then you can also change these zeros to ones to get the second controller and so forth and then same with the key touch you can get all you check the down or hit for any touches and change this zero here to any the number of the touch you want to check and then you see down here you have your joystick as it showed up here you got your joystick constants and then right here you get the, you have these care constants for the get care command which I'm about to show you right now and what kind of what get care allows you to do is to take in input from the keyboard from the user and you can put it in a string display it which is what I'm going to show you right now so what we'll do is we'll set up a field that will store our input string from the user and then down in our on update we're going to grab that character using get care and that it returns the integer representation of the character that's typed on the keyboard and now to put it this character add it to our string you need to check and make sure it's actually a printable string or a printable character so you just make sure it's greater than 32 and then you're going to add it to our string using you just append it like this and then you use the string dot from care static function from the string class if you remember that from the string strings revisited video if you saw that and we'll just throw in the care that converts this character to an, a string value and then adds it to our in string and then I'm going to go down here and I'm actually going to change this to string and add our string to it and ok let me leave the mouse thing there so now and then you can get and you see I can type on the keyboard and get all this stuff and say hello well you can see backspace doesn't work so you have to actually check for backspace separately and then subtract from the string but I'm not going to do that because just trying to show you basic input stuff. Alright, I think the mouse down still works. Alright, and now for the fun stuff that y'all came here for, and we're going to move this ship around. So let's get rid of all this stuff just made and get rid of this so it looks nicer. And we get rid of this field, and we're going to add a couple more fields. So we've already got our ship angle here. A couple fields we want to add a ship speed. So we're going to move our ship around, and it's going to be stationary by default and then we also want to store the position of our ship in separate variables so we're going to have ship X and we're going to default it at 200 comma 200 like so and let's go ahead and go down here and draw our image on the screen so it's our ship and its position is ship X comma ship Y and now we're going to use the angle and scale overload of draw image so we're going to add the angle and then to scale it I'm just going to put it, make it half its size bring it down a little bit and now in our on update we're going to add an if key down and we're going to check if they, if they turn it left or if they hit the left key we're going to turn it left so to do that we're going to add values or add amounts to our ship angle. In this case we're going to do four so it turns kind of fast. And if key down, key right, we're going to go the other way. So we're going to subtract a certain amount from our ship angle. And so now when we run this, come on, run this and you can see left and right. Yay! Yay! Alright. Now to move forward and back we're going to check for key up and with, if it's up we're going to increase the speed and this speed is going to be applied every update so we want to make this kind of a small it's going to be more of an acceleration 
instead of just a velocity or a speed. So we're going to accelerate by 0.1 every frame if they're holding the key down. Otherwise, it's just going to move at a steady velocity. And so now we'll do the, whoops, if they hit the down key, we're going to decelerate. And now to apply this speed to the ship, we're going to increase its x direction by the ship speed multiplied it. And this is a little uh, game math, so if you're not a, if you're not really comfortable with this, I understand. Just uh, I'll be going over this kind of stuff in greater detail in my game tutorials. So for now, just type what I'm typing. And if you want, you can, there's plenty of tutorials on simple 2D physics you can look at YouTube or anywhere else and learn how to use these sine and cosine functions to move your sprites around. Alright so now that I'm moving at a certain speed based on my angle here using these sine and cosine functions I'm going to run it and now I'm moving around yay and now you can see oh no oh no off the screen, I don't even know where it's at now. I'm never going to get him back. He's off into no man's land. So, how we're going to keep him on the screen, we're just kind of kind of wrap it, the ship's position based on the size of the screen using the mod function or mod operator. So, to do that, we'll just reassign the ship. And this is more game math. Uh, it might not make too much sense, but just type what I type and mod it. So basically what's happened here is if if it goes greater than the ship or the screen size it's gonna mod it and then it's gonna return the remainder and then just wrap it back. And then the reason I have to add a size here is because when you go negative when you start going negative it wraps the wrong way. So I just kinda have to add this so it'll wrap correctly when it goes negative and so I'll run it. You see what happens. You see? Oh, yay, wraps. So now I never lose my ship. And I can make my asteroid game or whatever kind of game you want to make. And that's going to do it for input. Join me in the next one. We're going to go over sound and music with Mojo. If you have any questions, email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or leave some comments down below and see you in the next video.